welcome back, y'all. Second episode of Three Dudes in Grad School. Um, featuring me, myself, Adam Tobin, Antonio Scarvelis, Grant Johnson. And Grant, who do we have today? We have my cousin, <laughs> <laughs> the astound uh, Dr. Ken Johnson is uh, joining us today here on the Three Dudes in Grad School podcast. Welcome, Dean Johnson. I'm happy to be here, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the joke is that uh, the first week of medical school here, he brought up that we both had the same last name and introduced me as his cousin. So it's kind of stuck ever since. Well, it goes a little bit beyond that because I called you out as Dr. Smiley. Oh, that's that true. Point. <laughs> so, Smiley. Yeah, for those of you who don't, don't know my nickname, growing up was Smiley in the basketball world. So uh, I appreciate it, Dean Jay, for <laughs> shouting me out there. And we're just continuing that relationship. And uh, now he's here on the podcast. So um, I guess to start a little bit, just give us a little bit of rundown of what you do for OUHCOM, who you are, and we'll we'll fire you with some questions. Yeah, excellent. So this I'm starting my 13th year here at Ohio University. I am chief medical officer for the university and executive dean of our multi-campus medical school system. Uh, wow. And so I provide on um, vision, strategy, leadership over the multiple on um, campuses uh, and get to work with an incredible number of both internal and external partners all around the state. Let's go. That's awesome. Shout out Dublin and Shout Cleveland. Shout out Dublin and Cleveland. Yeah. We're here in the Athens campus. You can tell he practiced that. That was, that was slick. It was just like, I right, just rolled off the tongue. <laughs> it just rolled awesome. right off the tongue, man. Right. I said it once, a, once or twice before. So yeah. let's go. Start us with some questions, man. Um, Antonio, what do you got? He's well, wearing, you're wearing a Patriots jersey. I, I am. What's up with that? Or, well, you know, I just have to show off a little bit. I know the last nah, time we, 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 we talked about it, but we'll save that to a little to the end. Okay. Um, Dean Johnson, with somebody, you know, this is something that Grant asks a lot with uh, people that, especially in our class, of the why, like why, what is your why of how you got started, um, not only being a dean, but being, you know, getting into the medical field. What, what is your kind of why, why you got involved with that? Yeah, well, going, going back, so I was an athlete growing up, and I got hurt all the time. <laughs> so I was around physicians a lot, and I really liked what they did on helping out people, you know, someone who's in pain, on helping them to heal, get back to, uh, get back to athletics. Actually, in undergrad, I was a student athletic trainer, uh, for a little bit, and I went to physical therapy school for two years. Yeah, uh, PT, yeah. baby. PT. <laughs> yeah. uh, at the time, PT was a bachelor's degree. Master's right. wasn't really there. And then, you know, kind of progressed to master's and in, um, in PhD. But then I learned about osteopathic medicine. So I loved sports medicine. I loved, you know, working with the muscle skeletal system. And then, uh, now this is totally dating me. I learned about it in a Barron's Guide to Medical Education. I didn't know anything about osteopathic medicine. I'm from I'm from Boston. Uh, the, uh, no way, he's yeah, yeah. smart. <laughs> yeah. Boston. The the Bo the uh, Mass Osteopathic Association at the time had like 40 DOs. So it was you know, and, and at the time there were 15 colleges of osteopathic medicine. So I didn't know a lot about it, and I read about it, and I was like, this is exactly what I believe. You know, this kind of whole person approach to taking care of people, the musculoskeletal system, using manipulative treatment as a way to try to help with um, with healing. I mean, I immediately signed up for the MCATs and then, you know, studied, took them, and 12 months later, I was in medical school. Very nice. That's wow. awesome. A quick turnaround in a journey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that. I mean, when I was younger, I definitely thought I wanted to be a, be a physician. I tell you, the one thing that was my greatest concern was um, the being unidimensional being just focused on work and not family and other things outside of that. And being a physician, as you know, I mean, it's a huge commitment uh, to that. So I had to spend some time really thinking about that a lot and then looking for uh, examples of other people who had, you know, kind of really balanced lifestyles as much as you could be balanced. Yeah, I think one time we had a conversation and you were kind of emphasizing the, the balance approach. You know, we talk about that as osteopathic physicians, balancing a whole person approach in our treatments and taking care of our patients. But how do you emphasize that now as a dean of a medical school and then as you were going through residency and training, you know, like what were your three things that kind of kept you stable and balanced and, and how do you still live that out today? Yeah, you know, so um, when I was a student doing a cardiology rotation um, and we were working really long hours, the cardiologist I was working with said, you can't take care of other people unless you take care of yourself. And that like totally hit home. On for me. So I tried to incorporate taking care of myself 
through all of my not only training, but then into practice. And I encourage students to do that too. So I'll tell you, one of my greatest compliments I ever got was from a student on our Cleveland campus. And we had a high stakes, this was the opening of the campus. We had our accreditors visiting, whole team of people on board. And uh, they're there, you know, going through every nook and cranny of the campus. At lunchtime, they go and write. So I went to our gym and ran. And that night I got an email from one of our students who said, Dr. Johnson, if you can run during a high stakes on uh, accreditation visit, I can do that. I can take care of myself while I'm studying. Yeah. Uh, and so part of what I've tried to do is kind of walk the walk on here. And I'm pretty open about, you know, about taking care of myself, running at lunch before before school, after school. Um, or, we always oh, see this guy working out. <laughs> he's always wow. got his gym and his duffel yeah, bag. He's yeah, always yeah. getting after well, it. But I, wow. do it on, so I do it on purpose because I want to give people the permission to take care of themselves. Because when you're in medical school, it's you feel like, you know, I got to get up and eat, breathe, drink, and actually even sleep medicine on mm-hmm. at, that, at that time. So I try to, from the beginning of my training, you know, I think about th- these are just my own personal yeah. values, right? So my, my personal values are on uh, God, family, work. So work is number three mm-hmm. uh, in that. And it's really easy in medicine to make work number one and give up on the other two. So I, I can remember being in medical school and my family's going to go cut down a Christmas tree. And I have a test coming up on that, on that Monday. I remember being in the car studying Mm -hmm. while I'm going to cut down a Christmas tree because I didn't want to I didn't want to miss that with you know with my family then I go you know we go do the uh, Christmas tree cutting and then back you know back to studying so I tried really hard to integrate in taking care of myself and being with family while in training because I figured if I didn't do it when I was in training I might never do it Uh, and then moving on from there into practice uh, and actually residency and then practice uh, and just figuring out how to f- how to fit it in and planning out the whole the whole week, saying it's going to be seven o'clock this day, seven cl- seven o'clock at night that day, lunchtime mm-hmm. on this but day. But you're always trying to fit it in. Yeah, yeah, definitely, because it's important. It's important to me. And um, again, going back to that, you can't take care of other people unless you're taking care of yourself. Modality, and it's pretty. Ha- it's really hard to give people the recommendation around like good sleep, good food. You know, take care of yourself if you if you're not doing that yourself. Uh, right. So it's really been a personal discovery for me. Especially with a patient, if they're looking and you're rattling off, you should do this, 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 and then, well, are you doing that? Right. No. Right. Yeah. Why should they believe? Why yep. should they listen to what you have yep. to say? Exactly. It's exactly. important. It's important, like you said, you know, like being the dean of the medical and it, like medical school and everything, like obviously there's a high standard that goes to that and people are looking at you. And so it like kind of holds yourself accountable, I can imagine, of, you know, wanting to set a good example for the students, letting them know. Like you said, you see the, you see this guy around all the time working out Always, and everything. Man. So, right. Like, right. Letting your not, or like letting your students know that they're able to do that is is crucial. I yeah, think. and I started something when when I first came here, uh, first time meeting second year students. They were like, "Well, how can we meet with you?" And I was like, "Well, you know, you can send me an email, you can set up something with my assistant, or we can just go for a run." And they and the person asked the question was a runner. He was like, yeah. "I totally want to do that." So then I just started doing you know runs with students, and then over the years I've done just about everything: run, yoga, on um, biking. Um, Zumba, <laughs> you just, there you go. Whatever, Zumba. you know, what, whatever. Saw this guy at the it, Athens Marathon just yeah. dominating. <laughs> wow, I'm trying to run the half this uh, yeah. this coming April, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent. That'd be kind of fun. Um, How many marathons do you do a year? You so my goal right now is to do two marathons and two half marathons a year, every quarter, one every quarter. So I'm doing the Columbus Marathon coming up here in October. Let's go. So you've yeah. been training for that? Yep, I have been, and I did on. I did a half marathon in Columbus a couple of weeks ago, which was wow. really did fun. Did you need OMM? How's those legs feeling? I needed a little bit. You know what? One of the, the one of the funnest parts of that was that the folks manning the re- recovery area were a bunch of our grads who oh, were really? were part of That's the sports cool. med program at Ohio Health. Um, so crazy. it was really it was really it's fun. Full circle. Yeah, it was great seeing them there. Any PTs there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They didn't have their PT uniform on, yeah. so I couldn't I couldn't tell. <laughs> the polos and the khakis. Yeah. Casual. Yeah. Yep. Cool. You had mentioned um, when you had said the thing the three things that uh that grounded you was your faith. Can you talk about how you incorporated that, how that grew and kind of held you down, uh, something to lean on throughout your journey? Yeah, you know, um, there are times where you're faced with difficult choices and um, 
it has helped guide me both in caring for patients and then being there for my family. So I'll give you a specific example. I was supposed to be on call when I got a call that my father-in-law was dying and in the hospital. So I could have just said, nope, nope, I'm going to be on call uh, and I'm going to go do that. But then I went to one of my partners, told him what was going on. We switched call around. Then I was able to go to the hospital, be there when he was dying. So for me, having that value system in place is just really helpful in grounding and making good decisions. Then it's also with patient care, it's also really helpful as well. I, I respect people for what their belief systems are, no matter what that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a primary care physician. I'm also board certified in neuromuscular medicine. So I have two boards, you know, one that's a generalist, one that's a specialist. And uh, I've had the honor of taking care of people during what I think of as the best, to best of times and the hardest of times. The best of time, I, I did OB, delivered tons of babies. Uh, that was great. Uh, then I've taken care of a number of people who may have had cancer and other things like that. And that's been helpful for me, grounding me in caring for them and their own belief systems of what that is. And in being able to have really open conversations uh, with people. So I had um, a friend of mine who was a runner. He asked me to be his primary care physician. Uh, and his name is Fred. And Fred, uh, unfortunately, developed brain cancer. So I took care of him all through the end part of his life. And at finally, at one point, point, I said, Fred, I think it's time. You know, he, he was undergoing chemo after chemo, on, et cetera. His quality of life was really poor. And he, he literally was like, oh, thank you. This is the right mm. This is the right decision. And then the last time I saw him was at home in hospice. He, him and his family uh, gathered together. It was probably one of the most beautiful things I've, you know, that I've participated in and as part of that. So, again, again, going back to the healthcare professions, you're – you're with people at the best of times, sometimes at the worst of times, when they're in the greatest need. I feel like it's a really sacred space that you're in there on mm -hmm. with them. So for me, having my own belief system is helpful, and then just kind of respecting on folks that in their own belief system. I uh, Here's another example. We I practiced in an area where there was an Indian reservation, and we had we supported on the practice, and one of the faculty was actually on our faculty as well in the family medicine residency, and we had a, a newborn die, um, and they had their uh, medicine man on come in and do a ceremony in the hospital. It was great, uh, and it was just it was so touching, so beautiful uh, to do that. So, for me, I think the other part of that is it just creates a it creates a space than to allow people to you know, kind of express their belief systems and what's the most helpful and meaningful to them at mm -hmm. both of those times, at the best of time and at the, at the most challenging of times. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think it's such a stressful, you know, the best times and the worst of times, it's such a, you know, hectic, it can get really hectic and having that foundation that you can lean on right. and kind of find comfort in those times is really important. Exactly. I think that's the beautiful thing about medicine that I've been learning as we're, I'm going through my training and our training together is it, it gives you a platform and an opportunity to get vulnerable with patients and people because they can be at their high or they can be at their low. It just depends on where they're at in their treatment or their life or whatever. So I, I try to implement that myself. And I feel like these other two do too, is right. staying firm on your own faith. And then that gives you the energy and the strength to, you know, you, you can do all things through him. So it, it kind of propels you to to help other people and to want them to get out of that space or keep them in the good space. So. Yeah, you know, one thing that I really like about osteopathic medicine is it's based off a set of principles. So it gives you some, like, guardrails around how do you think about things. And in addition to that, you know, A.T. still the guy that started it. He was so, so far ahead of his time. He really pr promoted and thought through a body, mind, and spirit perspective. He said man is complete when triune, which is thinking about those those things. And he talked about um, God as like the master architect, right? So um, I loved that very integrated approach right from the beginning. So he said things like stress can affect health, nutrition can affect health. And at the time, he was, he was looked at as a total kook. Mm -hmm. But at the time, they were doing things like bloodletting and leeches and mercury and arsenic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Let it all out. <laughs> and, and, and so it wasn't to develop a new, a new kind of medicine. It was to improve medicine of the, of the day. Mm -hmm. And those principles, you know, that we're on, you know, body, mind, and spirit, looking at the musculoskeletal system as the primary system of the body, all the systems are related to each other. 
on in rational treatments based off of kind of understanding on all that, it makes complete sense. So when you're in medical school or really, you know, kind of lots of the health professions, you're learning about things like uh, in muscles or about ATP or uh, about the Krebs cycle, and et cetera. It's as if it's happening, you know, somewhere out, you know, yeah. kind of yeah. out in space here. But then thinking about how does all that relate on t to each other. I used to, when I was a student athletic trainer mm -hmm. in physical therapy, uh, the trainer that I worked with, he he thought his job was in part to give athletes something to do to keep them busy and um, to let their body heal. On um, because it you know at the, <laughs> I saw something on on on, on Facebook uh, a week or so ago it was a, a runner went into his uh, physician with a broken leg and uh, and the physician says you know you're gonna have to keep off this for six weeks and he says oh so does that mean I, I have to do an easy ten and then <laughs> yeah, right. so I mean wow. so so the the um, I I really like you know, kind of that approach. If So that's the mind part of it, right? And in, in, in some ways, the spirit, which is the the, the drive to do to mm. do better. So without re it, it's helpful recognizing, I think, all of those all of those things and looking at people in kind of totality. Totality, holistic. Totality. Yeah. Totality. yeah. Wow. I, I, uh, I had a cool experience at LSU this past year and this past summer. And the athletic trainer there was giving me an example of well, not one day if I'm doing sports medicine or in practice, if you have a patient that has a diagnosis where they're going to be out for, let's say, a month, don't say a month because to an athlete or to a person, that just means they're going to sit around for four weeks. Do it week by week. Say, we're going to take it week by week, you know, yeah. instead of just yep. saying a month. So mm -hmm. I, that just brought a spark in my mind. So shout out to him and um, that's cool. Yep. It goes along with like unrealistic goals too and like short-term, long-term goals, what you're, what you're going for. Um, but I guess kind of to go back what you said, like as far as seeing people at their worst, seeing people at their best, like the thing I love about PT is that you kind of see the transition between both. You know, they come in at their worst, like ACL injury, like post-op, like they can't really do much. But then you see the progression, you see like the development of, of how they, you know, progress in their treatment. And have you ever seen that? Have you ever like been a part of that or is it mainly just like the one stop shop kind of thing? I no, no, no. Many times. So, so the other, you know, this other part, again, kind of liking the osteopathic philosophy is that part of our job is to unleash the body's own ability to heal itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if you didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to do anything, right? Yeah. You know, so the body, yeah. body maintains a certain temperature, a certain pH, et cetera. So part of what I like about that approach to it, which is how do we move the patient towards health all the time and taking that approach, the body has just such an amazing ability to heal. And then looking at that amazing transformation that happens, you use the ACL example of someone who comes in with, you know, it's kind of blown out, swollen knee that then has surgery that then you're working through and the swelling's going down, their range of motion's going up, their strength is getting better, their perception is improving. Uh, et cetera. And then the, you know, getting back to what Grant was saying is like help at the beginning of that, they may, they may be a great sense of despair uh, mm, for, the, for, for sure. them. So how do you kind of keep them in a moving in a positive direction, managing mm -hmm. what could be despair of, you know, having someone who's a high level athlete or anybody uh, and, and then on uh, helping them move, move along. I've seen it many, many times uh, yeah. here. And I've, that's the part that I love participating in. Now, the challenge, I think, of being a healthcare provider who's um, working directly with a patient, and so whether it's physical therapy, osteopathic medicine, manipulative medicine, et cetera, if they're not improving, it's on you. As right. opposed to, you know, so we gave them on um, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen's not working, so we're going to give you this other this other medication. It's it's the medicine that's not working, you have something, if, if you're not working, mm. if what you're doing, so there's a real um, personal um, commitment inside of that, and, and, and it's you. Um, and so then having the uh, recognition when something's not working and trying something different, or you may get to a point where you as a provider don't have anything to offer the patient and you need to get them over to somebody else mm. and having the humility to say, you know what, I've done the best I can and right. um, I want you to see my partner on um, who has a slightly different approach and let's let's see if we can go about it from from that perspective. Yeah. It's it's really easy to think like he's like this person's coming to me like I can fix everything. I want to, you know, but it takes you need to like lower your pride sometimes, realize that all right, 
I know that this person that can do it better. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel yeah. like we just talked about it in class. Like I feel like I don't know. I'll just throw it a random percentage, like 80 to 90 percent of the percentage is just getting the patient to trust you to like right. know that like they're on board with the treatment and like how you talk to right. them and being, you know, communicating yourself well, like being well spoken, getting gaining their trust, knowing that like we're trying going to do the best that we can um, for you to get the best possible outcome and best possible treatment. Yeah, you know, and I think that's actually part of the secret sauce of helping people to heal. And when you're doing anything that involves your hands on with the person, you establish a trusting relationship almost unlike any other. If they let you into their personal space, so if you're doing strength and exercises with them or manipulative treatment, whatever that is, there's an innate level of they got to at least let you into their space and a bit of establishing of that trust. And then, as you were saying, kind of continue to build that trust. And let's go back to the ACL person, which is you've worked with, with folks that have been on this journey and you can reassure them you're where you need to be, where you need to be. And we're going to help you continue to move along in this in this journey there. It's huge. We talked about that last week. It's, we did. This life in general is a journey, you know, it, yeah. like life for us right now, we're in school, we're students, but we have to think long term. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just every day, but it's how do I continue to get through this? And I think learning that now is going to, and hearing that from you on the other side of it, after going through it, that's going to like pay dividends for when we're taking care of a patient and being able to say like, be able to be vulnerable and have him humble and humility. Right. And, that's right. absolutely. and that just comes from the experience of being, you know, through that journey and working through it. You know, it's the meadow. They always say like, when you're, you're always a student of medicine, you're always learning more and more and more. And the more education, you, the more experience you have with it, you know, you know what to do. Um, yeah. You know, I was working with an 80 year old physician who was then working with a group of folks who had been the, the youngest experienced person had been in practice for 15 years. And I was, I just happened to be along with them. And she said, to this group when you get some experience. So for her, you know, it, 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 it was a lifelong journey for her still. She was still actively learning. And that's one of the parts that I love about this, which there's, there's no destination, right? I mean, you're continuing to learn and grow and, and challenge yourself on over time and things, things change and you learn and uh, hopefully do, do better over time. Yeah, absolutely. Kobe it, always said, never satisfied. Yeah. Never. <laughs> yeah. We're at the two minute warning. We got to rattle. But as you know, we were talking about that that journey, you know, and we're we're kind of taking the steps through it, being a second years. Yep. Um, people that you know are wanting to start off or thinking about starting this journey or want to apply uh, to medical schools. What is some advice or things that you you know, being the dean that you look for, or advice that people that would want to start? What would you say to them? So, someone who's looking to get into medical yes. school. Yes. On. So, I mean, the, the basic piece right around uh, uh, strength in the sciences and studying all that, that's, that's, that's a basic part of it. But then I think what, what we look for here in particular, we have very holistic view of looking at an uh, application. So on uh, people who understand the profession, right? So it's been time with people who really understand uh, what it is. And we, I, you know, I joke around that I say that we as a medical school want to be part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And we want mm -hmm. to attract students that want to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. So folks who have done altruistic work, whether that's volunteering for um, a charity or, uh, or whatever, with that, with that sense of folks who really want to be part of something and to give, uh, to give back. So we look at, we look at it in a very holistic uh, way all the way, uh, all the way around uh, with that. And then I think the other part, maybe a kind of meta thing here is, is habits. So it's good habits of study. And what we had talked about before was good habits of taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. There's actually a curve looking at productivity for studying that and if you if you do it over time, it gets mm -hmm. better, 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 and then it starts to drop off on action. You start to oh, work. I can feel it. You yeah. start to work yeah. against yourself, like, right? Go shoot some free throws. Right, like, right. Go outside. So, so it's it's understanding it's understanding that understanding yourself, kind of getting out of yourself a little bit, and saying, you know what, I need to sleep, I need to exercise, mm -hmm. and and I think some folks end up um, wasting their time by going over what they already know versus what they, what they don't, what they don't know. So, I, but, but all of that comes down to just developing really good, basic, basic habits. And then the other thing, probably the last thing I would say is that I think people are afraid to seek guidance on sometimes and seeking guidance and mentoring and modeling is so, so helpful uh, in that it's, it rockets you along. And what we try to do in our admissions process is we try to just make it completely transparent and open to people. People contact me. I say I'll connect you to my, my admissions folks. They can tell you exactly what we're yeah. 
what we're looking for. There's mm-hmm. no, there's no secrets here. And then you can start to kind of gauge yourself over and you know what, I've been studying like crazy. I'm doing no volunteerism. I'm going to spend a little bit more time doing that. Mm-hmm. There you go. The secret yeah. sauce. The secret yeah. Sauce, the secret <laughs> it's not just about the grades. And yeah. I think that's, it's, you know, about what, I mean, I'm not in medical school by any yeah. means, but it's kind of the same thing with PT school, just being holistically, you know, well-rounded wanting to be, like you said, like a part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's the, theme that I'm picking up on this episode is the humbleness or the humility that you have to have because you can have it in all areas of your life like being a medical practitioner studying you know you have to be able to let go okay I'm not I'm not being productive right let me find something else to do and then just how you take care and treat other people you know never be afraid to ask a question yeah absolutely I can't thank you enough for coming on and absolutely um, appreciate it yeah just just being being an influence to obviously the medical school, but hopefully a little bit of our audience here watching and listening. And um, I'll let Tobin take it away. Last cool, thing man. before we head oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Pats. Yeah, all right. How go Pats. That win I, was, yesterday. I was a little yeah. conflicted yesterday uh, over that because, you know, <laughs> Joe, Burrow, Joe Burrow from Athens on here, but mm-hmm. the Patriots are have been my long, long, long term oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> favorite. It. So we'll see what happens. Jacoby looked good. I hope they keep Drake May, you know. Just a year to learn. Yeah. Don't throw them to the wolves. We saw what happened with Mac Jones. Yep. Yep. So hopefully they keep it rocking and rolling. If I'd known, I would have worn my Pats shirt here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, maybe, I, maybe I have to get one that's half Pats, half tomorrow, Bengals. I'm going to wear my I have a Patriots polo. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Uh, if no you have way. a Patriots tie, you can match. <laughs> okay. There, yeah, that's right. good. there it is. There we go. My Bengals got to do better, man. Yeah. Uh, they'll be all right. We'll be fine. Just, Joe needs a new haircut. Just, just ripped off, just ripped <laughs> off the suit. And had yeah. a, <laughs> jersey well, out. thanks, guys. This has been really. It's yeah. gone by like like that. It's been a blast sitting here oh, chatting man. with you. Absolutely, we really thanks appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of this, man. Um, it was really nice to meet you. This is the first yeah. time I've met you. Um, seemed like a great guy, a great mentor. Um, oh for man, everyone. Yeah. I mean, everyone here, all the medical students. Um, so just thank you for coming on. Yeah, it was um, it was great to be here. We'll have to maybe do a part two in, in the future. Okay, yeah, be happy sure. to do that. For me, myself, Antonios, Grant, and Dean Johnson, uh, we want to say thank you. Uh, tapping in again to the next episode, and be looking for uh, the next one. Share with your friends, and uh, yeah, thank you awesome. all for, See you guys. for joining. See you. Us. Cool. Dude. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. Wow. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>